student uh, she she is she is currently practicing in hindujha hospital and let me just briefly uh, mention her uh, her qualifications also before i hand it over to her she is an mbbs and a diploma in child care and she is currently pursuing her uh, dnb in pediatrics uh, and so specially we have requested dr merin that if she could focus on on covid and children and i'm sure there are many parents out there even though children have not been a subject of fatality nevertheless uh, there are a lot of worry and concern in the hearts of parents so over to you dr merin once again thank you for joining us hi uh, thank you so much master uh, so uh, i've been working uh, with children and i think uh, am i heard well fine so um i'm going to talk in hindi and english uh, my hindi is not that great but uh, i'm going to mix it up so that uh, we can finish it off fast and uh, uh, so we already heard that corona is a new disease uh, all together and obviously it's all adults uh, that are having the protocols made for adults so for children it's it's even newer than that so um, uh guidelines changing everything is all new so i'm just going to run you all through uh what you all can do to take care of your children during this time any uh, precautions that you all can take and um just everything that uh, let's just go through the slide okay so uh can i go to the next slide okay so why is it suddenly so important to talk about covid in children and all this at the moment uh, this, uh, a lot of reports that say that the third wave that we're going to see in our country and in the world is going to be uh, involving mostly children so uh, actually that is uh, no scientific or any koi medical uh, proof nahi hai is baat ka so uh, can't say if that's going to happen or if it's true so but we can definitely say ki compared to the first wave that we saw Uh, ये सेकेंड वेव में काफी एडमिशन तो नहीं हुए हैं बट हुए हैं कम्पेयर टू द फर्स्ट वेव दैट वी है हमें ये भी पता है कि हमारे देश में अभी तक uh, कोई वैक्सीन अप्रूव नहीं हुआ है इन लेस देन एटीन ईयर्स काफी रिसर्च एंड स्टडीज हो रहे हैं बट अभी तक कोई अप्रूव वैक्सीन नहीं है uh but she actually we know that children have been at home no one's going to school no one is going for tuitions no one's going to the colleges and hopefully no children are going out to play also so uh, uh what is their source of infection per se is definitely their parents so uh, precaution wise infection wise it is uh, everything is dependent on what is their source of infection so uh, why why could we have uh, seen a uh, increase in infection in children could be because uh, a lot bunch of parents moving out for their daily uh, uh, work or like going out to the marketplace so we already heard it in the previous uh, uh, pvds till now but the kind of precautions that need to be taken when we go go out to workplace when we go out to the markets and you know all of that so uh, we i would suggest and i would really uh enforce that uh, a child getting infected meaning there is a uh, there is some um uh, laxity in the parents part uh, so uh, really urge that parents really uh, take all the precautionary methods so that they can protect their children against the disease and uh, would like to stress that parents uh, i know right now quite a lot of parents could have been vaccinated and you know uh remember that even though you are vaccinated you are still a source of infection to your children not just your children other vac and non vaccinated uh, people so continue wearing the mask continue taking the precautions uh one important and good thing that i can say about children and covid is that we have very very low death rate per se till now next slide okay so prevention in children is the same as uh, uh, as in adults uh, mask uh, less than 2 years uh, it is not uh, advised that uh, less than 2 years children wear mask uh, they can have some 
increased breathing difficulties their airways are not very uh, well formed and you know uh, it is not uh, advised but if the child is cooperating and if you think the child can cooperate with a mask on even though they are less than 2 years old you can definitely go ahead with it uh, more than 2 years it's definitely compulsory you should make sure a child who is more than 2 years is uh, wearing a mask hand washing uh, and ye ye sab humne already sun liya hand washing 20 seconds uh the steps of hand washing we already have seen it uh in the previous um uh ppts also sanitizer more than 60% and social distancing again uh, stress out here that parents have to be an example if you are going to do it right your parent, your children are going to do it right you wash your hands for 20 seconds the child is going to wash their hands for 20 seconds and definitely you have to teach them how to do this so it's all on you Uh, next slide is on uh, what to do when a parent is positive, which I think is uh, a lot of people might have this question. First of all, I would say that uh, whichever parent, be a father or mother, first of all, the parent has to be isolated. Uh, advice uh, that if the child is very young, like let's say uh, less than one year or uh, very close to the mom, uh, you know, uh, is going to get cranky and is going to get really upset if the mom is far away. i would uh, say that it is okay if you uh, isolate the child with the mother who is positive in a room separately and uh, while the mother wears a mask at all times and um, with all precautions uh, the mother and the child can be isolated together uh definitely home quarantine your child if there is a father or mother who is positive in the house do not send your child out to another house uh this is i think uh, sabse bada problem abhi hamare country mein ki uh, when the father gets positive or the mother gets positive the child is sent off to their grandparents or like uh, other houses so we have to remember that even uh, though they do not have any symptoms they are definitely uh, a possible uh, asymptomatic carrier and especially with this second wave of covid we know how uh it has been uh, very infective one person positive in the house the rest of the house is going to have the infection they are definitely most probably also being a carrier for the infection so uh, definitely no change of houses stay in the same house uh, if there is someone who can take care of the child if not obviously there are uh, circumstances that uh, the rule does not apply to uh monitor your child for any symptoms and most importantly do not panic children like already said they have a good uh, recovery rate they have a good uh, immunity against this virus so do not panic symptoms again it's the same i'm not going to say it again uh, fever uh, running nose uh, khasi uh, sore throat headache diarrhea everything about the same nausea vomiting stomach pain loss of smell and taste muscle and body pain uh this is the same as we see in adults uh, not much of a difference uh, per se uh the last two points which is basically irritability excessive crying bahut zyada rona bahut bilkul chid chid rehna bachcha ya fir chote bacche jab when they're not uh, like when they're not drinking milk well and they are like absolutely not ready to um, eat well these kind of uh, symptoms uh, kids in the younger like less than 1 year uh kids remember that the symptoms in children are always going to be mild and asymptomatic in more than a majority like a uh, very few of them can have a, a severe infection uh, except obviously those with any underlying diseases as we've already heard similar to adults there are some children who can have heart diseases there are children who can have problems as asthma or like uh, chronic lung diseases or obesity or uh, diabetes in children or like some immune problem any of these children would i would suggest that uh, you should definitely consult your um, pediatrician uh, who you're taking your child to and keep them informed of the status next uh, so uh, a note on home treatment most of the children are definitely managed at home so most importantly you have to make sure they are rest uh, rested well they have a balanced diet uh would not ask you to change too much of their diet whatever they are comfortable with whatever uh, they like eating is what you got to give them because you don't want them to be cranky uh, over not feeding uh you can increase the, the citrus fruits that you give them like possibly 
oranges, lemon. All these things can be increased. Uh, make sure that they're well hydrated with water, juices, uh, whatever that they are fond of. Uh, treatment wise, uh, I know a lot of people are like, what do we do to treat our children? Uh, there's only one treatment uh, in a mild disease that is at home. The only treatment you have to give your child is paracetamol for fever. If other than that, if the child has some stomach pain, you have uh, stomach ache medicines like cyclopam, colicate, or if they have like cold and cough, you have other, other medications given for it, which is all just symptomatic treatment. There is no no medicine which is like your which you give in adults which are advised in adults that are at the moment advised in children at home. Uh, more than uh, other than that, if your child is already on any multivitamin supplements, there's no need to top it up. If not on any multivitamin supplements, you can start them on vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, and also zinc. Uh, monitoring at home, definitely, as uh, Lindsay Andy has also uh, mentioned, uh, definitely monitor oxygen saturations for your child also. Along with oxygen saturations, also monitor the temperature of the child, that is uh, for fever. And uh, in the younger ones, there's one more thing that you have to keep a check on, that their activity, like they, they should be... Uh, routinely active other than uh, the mild, mild decreases when they have fever or stuff like that but otherwise they should be alert they should be looking around they should be uh, interacting with their parents now danger signs these danger signs are rarely seen in covid but i would like to mention these are the danger signs in your ch child if you have it definitely uh, you have to go to the emergency, uh, to the hospital close by. Uh, that is persistent high fever. When I say persistent, I mean uh, a 102 uh, sort of fever persistently, which is not breaking with a paracetamol. And it is persistent for more than two days, more than 48 hours. Oxygen saturation less than 94%. A fast heart rate. This is uh, a heart rate is monitored with your pulse oximeter. That is your oxygen saturation, which you can uh, do for the child. If you have like a really uh, varied difference in the heart rate, uh, you can definitely take this as a danger sign. Also, uh, like we've already heard this about respiratory rates. It's difficult to actually monitor respiratory rates in children, but uh, if possible, uh, then uh, great. A uh, higher respiratory rate is again, again a danger sign. Any confusion, any altered sensorium, koi, uh, matlab, uh, there's some uh, varied in the way they're talking, kuch, uh, ulta seedha baat ho hai. They are not, they're not recognizing, they're not responding properly. In ye, This can be a dangerous sign. Dehydration, bilkul sook kya bacha jo hote hai, bilkul they're just ha having multiple loose motions or like vomiting continuously such that, um, they're absolutely dehydrated or like they're le lethargic, not moving around much. They're not accepting any feeds orally such that um, they can be like super lethargic or they have difficulty in breathing or they're having chest pain. These are your danger signs uh, for which you have to go to the hospital, uh, the nearby hospital, take, take the child to the emergency. Okay, uh, this is, uh, I'm just going to add it as a very small note. Uh, so just uh, for information, uh, there's, these are the uh, uh, my uh, uh, is basically, it is something that we see post-COVID in children, uh, mostly seen three weeks after uh, the actual infection of COVID, and it is when the kids come in with antibody positivity. This is a very rare disease uh, from last year to this, this year. Uh, as Dr. Melon, you can carry on.
I think we, have, we seem to be facing a small difficulty with Dr. Merin's connection. Um, I think she she was just trying to connect, connect back. We'll just wait for 20 seconds more. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Hello. Yes, yes, Dr. Maran, you can carry on. Yeah, uh, so I can now see the screen. Um, can you tell me when I stopped? So uh, you are about to share on breastfeeding, so please carry on from there. Okay, uh, can we go to the previous slide so I can finish talking about that? Yeah, so um, this is uh, this is the kind of patients that we're seeing right now with COVID. Um, I'm highlighting this because uh, this usually happens around uh, three weeks uh, post a COVID uh, infection. So what happens is um, you think the child has already got COVID three weeks three weeks early where he was an RT PCR positive. So three weeks later, it cannot be COVID again. So, uh, but it is important key. This is not an RT PCR positive. These kids are usually positive for antibodies. That is COVID IgG positives. So they can come in with a disease, which is actually the severe most uh, COVID diseases that we have seen uh, since last year. Uh, as a pediatrician, again, why I'm saying it's rare is that uh, till now I have seen around 15 cases since last year, which is very rare, but I would like to bring it to your notice because of the fact that uh, a lot of patients, a lot of uh, parents do not think it's COVID and let it go for longer and they come in uh, a little later. So what are the symptoms out here is persistent high fever for more than three days, rash as you can see in the picture ahead uh, on top, uh, red swollen tongue. Uh, with dry cracked lips, red eyes, that is a conjunctivitis uh, sort of red eyes, and a swollen lymph nodes like a neck swelling, as you can see in the pictures. Next slide. Uh, adding a note on breastfeeding, uh, we know that um, breast, a lot of, uh, this is a common topic that uh, we're getting a lot of questions on. Uh, there is no evidence of any virus transmission in breast milk per se. It, uh, we know that breast milk is what improves the immunity of the child. It is required for brain development and definitely separation does more harm than good. So uh, any mother who is COVID positive definitely continue breastfeeding with all precautions that can be taken. That is wear a mask, sanitize well, wash your hands, do everything that you can. Next slide. Uh, I would end my talk on uh, caring for children during this pandemic, uh, not as a COVID positive in general. It's a tough time for them. They, they are uh, too young to understand the difficulties. Um, 
of this pandemic. So uh, calm the anxieties, take time to play with them, talk to them, pray with them, uh, uh, calm their fears and, you know, make them understand uh, the situations around. Definitely decrease their non-academic screen time. That is, uh, re reduce the time that they uh, will be on their laptops or their TV or the cell phone other than when they're having online school. We, uh, this is a very important thing. Uh, also encourage them to pursue any hobbies, any interests that they have, painting, uh, uh, music, anything. Uh, definitely encourage them to get into it uh, with the in increased time that they spend at home. And uh, a small amount of daily physical activity, even at home, whatever they can do, definitely encourage them to do so. Thank you so much. <laughs>